Hello chess friends and welcome to the of chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit Decline series. So in this series we're starting this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we're starting a new opening uh, in the Queen's Gambit Decline series. Today we're analyzing the so-called Taraj defense. In our previous uh, series, mini series, we have uh, covered so far the semi Taraj defense but the Taraj defense is a little bit different in which uh, Black can risk to get an isolated pawn which can become of course a main strategical weakness because but it can be also the main stri uh, strategical strength of blacks because an isolated pawn middle game is very complicated to play for both sides so that's why the Taraj defense I think is the more dynamic opening than the semi Taraj uh, that we have covered recently uh, so if you're maybe a more dynamic player you should probably try out to play the Taraj defense if you're maybe more positional player then you should try out the semi Taraj defense so let's check out now what is the difference of the semi Taraj defense and the Taraj defense and what are the most important strategical ideas here for white and for black and I've prepared here really a brilliant game uh, first we're analyzing a little bit the game from black's perspective I've prepared here really a brilliant game played by Stockfish with the black pieces in uh, the same uh, pardon me in the Taraj defense in which uh, here Stockfish applied the most important strategical and tactical elements of this very cool opening so let's check out now this opening we have of course d4 we have d5 and after c4 the queen's gambit is on the board we have now the move e6 and now after move knight to c3 in the same Taraj defense series we have covered this move knight to f6 and then uh with the move c5 uh after potential maybe knight to f3 then uh black played simply the move c5 and we have reached now the semi Taraj uh defense uh position but the Taraj defense is a little bit different we're delaying the move knight to f6 we're not playing with the knight so far we're playing simply c5 immediately as we have mentioned also in our semi Taraj defense series, this move c5 is a clarification idea, is a dynamic move. It's already a simplification idea for, for, for black. And many times you will probably even face a more positional approach to the game. Uh, here e3 can be played. But uh, here e3 I think leads into at least an equal game for, for black. So that's why e3 maybe not the most popular way to play. But many times now in top grandmaster level even this move e3 is played going into symmetry and going into equal middle game in my opinion white should not proceed like this white needs to create i think further dynamics because white is playing with the white pieces and when you want to when you're playing with the white pieces you don't want to go into drawish line so that's why e3 may be a pragmatic idea to go into simplified lines but many times uh here after move c5 white goes simply into this line c takes d5 c takes d5 after e takes d5 risks here for black to create an isolated pawn because after d takes c5 there is always but always an option for white to create an isolated pawn for black but there is a huge problem uh, here for white white cannot play that immediately white cannot exploit this uh, the, the isolated pawn immediately because there are simple rules of the isolated pawn and i sorted them out because uh, the main strategies that can happen in the Taraj defense are uh, pawn isolated pawn strategies and also pawn majority strategies uh, because if uh, here white doesn't react if white plays a different idea uh, here let's see after e takes d5 and maybe something like g3 knight to f3 there is always this idea uh, here we can create a three versus two pawn majority so the strategy that can happen also is a pawn majority attack here on the queen side by white but also a pawn majority attack uh, uh, here uh, um, uh, by white on the king side or oh, black would of course coordinate the attack here towards the queen side that that are the imbalanced uh, pawn structures that you can get so that's why i think um, the taras defense the normal taras defense is simply made for a dynamic player in the semi taras defense series we have seen that it's a more positional approach to the game uh, where we can create of course a tiny little improvements in the game here the pawn structure is always uh, already exploding in the center of the board the pawn structure is already asymmetric metrical the pawn structure is simply wild from an early stage of the game so as we mentioned the main strategies that can happen to you are isolated pawn strategies and also pawn majorities in the middle game so uh here after move d5 uh, e takes d5 i'm not sure if you're going to reach this isolated pawn strategy immediately because in my opinion d takes c5 an early d takes d5 
would be not good here uh here for white because as usual in the pawn uh idol the pawn strategy the main goal uh here for black is to push the pawn uh on d4 so the the player that has a an isolated pawn wants of course to advance the pawn here on d uh, d4 wants of course to create some spaces on the other hand the the player that is playing against an isolated pawn wants to create a blockade wants to simply block out this isolated pawn wants also to reach the end game stage and i'm not sure if uh, white has secured here the blockade of the isolated pawn because white has not in my opinion because here d4 is a realistic opportunity we can push the pawn immediately the knight has to move somewhere and in the near future this pawn will also be probably taken so that's why um you will not see in an early stage of the game that white creates this isolated pawn this isolated pawn is sort of a positional risk that black can gain if white manages to create a blockade because here if we play e3 maybe knight to f3 then maybe the blockade is secured uh, then maybe black cannot uh, advance the pawn on d4 but if white plays too early the move d takes c5 then of course d4 will happen and black has a comfortable game by creating a space of advantage on the fourth rank so that's why white needs to be patient by creating this isolated pawn but it's always somewhere there in the air uh, this position can go into an isolated pawn structure so that's why black has to be also careful if white can create this blockade idea so so far it white cannot so that's why this is not a risk that white will simply take d takes c5 even bishop to c5 is an opportunity then with d4 so the pieces of blacks getting very active it's not a weak isolated pawn here for, for black so that's why <coughs> as we said white needs to be patient but as a long-term plan white can create an isolated pawn so here uh we're analyzing now uh the further possibilities after e takes d5 most of the times white goes into the so-called uh two knight variation after move knight to f6 we have now the move g uh, g3 and after knight to c6 we have reached now the so-called Prague variation and the Prague variation is i think the most often and the most popular uh line of the taraj defense the problem i think uh, in these types of ideas again uh white cannot advance the pawn here uh white cannot play the move d takes c5 because after for d takes c5 again i'm pointing out there is maybe a huge plan for white to create an isolated pawn but again it would be simply too rushed because d4 maybe knight to a4 if you maybe are trying to stuck uh, and defend your pawn on c5 then you get this one b5 is the most important idea tactical idea i think that you have to memorize uh, if something like this happens to you here if you play of course c takes uh, b6 then a takes b6 uh, the knight is a little bit hanging and if bishop to g2 happens maybe to create some kind of an attack on this diagonal actually here with move b5 the game is over simply for white because you can maybe try this one knight to d4 but now knight takes d4 you can maybe take but queen to a5 is simply winning the game uh here for for black we have now this very very powerful check you have to play knight to c3 we can take out this one and the problem is now you cannot take because you lose the rook here on uh, on h1 so that's why you see even in even if in a further development uh, here after move knight to c6 uh black is not really challenged here to get an isolated pawn on d4 as we said maybe in long term maybe in a couple more moves 10 15 moves white can create an isolated pawn for black and can making something out of it but not in an early stage of the game not when the pawn structure is so dynamic already with the move d4 we, we see there is a huge huge positional problem here for white so even in this particular scenario as we said after move knight to f6 now um if white for instance plays a passive move e3 i think there is even a good opportunity here for for black to immediately play the move c4 c4 would create again a space advantage so that's why uh black would have here pawn majority attack possibility so as i said the main strategies that can happen in uh, tarash pawn structures are pawn majority attacks or isolated pawn structures in a later stage of the game so okay uh, let's check out now uh, the further continuation after move uh, g3 as we said we have reached now the prague uh, variation of the taraj defense knight to c6 many times of course uh, here d takes c5 is not an opportunity so that's why uh, many times in the continuation of the game we have normal ideas like bishop to g2 and after bishop to g2 now basically black doesn't have any better move than c 
simply further development we can play simple ideas bishop to e7 is of course now a good move here for black simply developing and again i'm pointing out d takes c5 never at least not now an opportunity because again you get simply d4 so we have now castling and now stockfish uh, here in one game the stockfish opponent was another engine siak uh, it's um, 2600 rated uh, engine so you see now how stockfish will brutalize uh, such a low rated engine here stockfish decided to go immediately into this pawn majority strategy so as i said what the outcome can be of the Taraj defense structure is pawn majority queen side attack here for black and of course a pawn majority king side attack here for, for, for white so okay after move c4 uh it's obviously uh where black is going to attack now b5 uh a5 b4 are the main ideas in the continuation here uh this other engine siak tried now to move bishop to f4 and we have now casting by stockfish knight to e5 and now h6 uh, trying maybe even here to move g5 kicking away the bishop from this very active square the problem is now i think after potential knight to c6 actually nothing dramatically changed here after move uh, b takes c6 uh stockfish basically cemented the pawn structure here in the center of the board maybe e4 uh could be an opportunity but after move e4 actually it's white now that gets maybe an isolated pawn so it's not something i think that uh, that white should do in the continuation of the game queen to b6 can be opportunity here also to attack maybe the b2 weakness so in the continuation after move h6 we have now queen to d2 by this other engine siak and now comes a very important move bishop to b4 uh, we can know this i think uh, in these structures after move um, c4 uh, here that uh, and that black plate after move c5 c4 it's a huge positional change it's a huge po positional change uh when it comes to dynamics when it comes to understanding the dynamics of this position after move c5 of course the pawn structure was dynamic after move c4 the pawn structure is static and when whenever the pawn structure is getting more and more static it's not so important i think to stay with the bishops on the board so uh, whenever uh, the pawn structure gets more and more static then the knights are better when the pawn structure is getting more and more dynamic then of course the bishops are better so that's why after move c4 uh, stockfish is almost like saying okay i don't care so much anymore about my bishop because now there is also uh this serious serious threat to play the move knight to e4 here in the continuation we have now knight uh, a3 kicking away the bishop bishop to a5 and now h3 we have now bishop to f5 very important move controlling the e4 square now there is again this huge huge position problem and you see now if you would love now to break break the position here a little bit on the queen side with the move b4 but the space advantage that uh, black has created uh, cannot of course it's not allowing simply a simple push here on b3 uh, so far the square is taken so here after move g4 we have bishop to uh, bishop to e4 a perfect move here by stockfish because if bishop to e4 knight to e4 and it's simply a lost game knight takes c6 b takes c6 here uh, still we have this very dynamic pin and i think uh, white is simply strategic loss here so we'll take take out simply this one we can continue the pressure uh, although the bishop is still perfectly fine but i think uh here there are simply too many lies for weaknesses the c3 will be then a weakness so it's a much much better position here for black uh, the engine al always gives here uh already gives here uh 1.5 evaluation for for black so after move bishop to e4 here f3 was played bishop to uh, h7 e3 here knight to uh, e8 uh, here knight takes c6 b takes c6 and now e4 uh here as we said white is trying to attack the king side that's always uh present in, in Taraj defense structures when the pawn structure is blocked out after move c5 to c4 now breaking here uh the pawn structure in the center of the pawn chain is a perfect idea here for white uh, here in the continuation we have knight to c7 we have queen to uh, f2 and now knight to e6 getting this knight very active we have bishop to e3 and now rook to b8 many times of course uh, black is using simply uh, the b file because okay the pawn 
infrastructure it's a little bit double but now the b file attack is of course a normal idea so we have e takes d5 uh, we have c takes d5 we have now f4 we have now bishop to uh, d3 getting used of this weak square position we have rook to uh, e1 and now knight to c7 uh, f5 and now rook to b3 we're not analyzing really now every move what happens if that happens i think we can understand that what stockfish is doing here is simply getting the pieces more and more active getting the pieces on the best natural squares wherever wherever they can be so so far a great great uh position played by by the fish so here rook from uh, e to c1 uh, rook to e8 a4 we have now rook takes uh, e3 great uh sacrifice here queen to e3 but now here we have rook to b2 there is now simply too much pleasure pressure here on dark squares we see now bishop to b6 will probably happen so it's now a huge huge uh, position here for for stockfish king to h1 uh, we have queen to h4 uh, rook to a3 bishop to b4 so you see this dark for problems uh that white is here are, are are obvious so here in the continuation we have rook to b3 knight to d1 and now uh bishop to f5 again a great move by uh, stockfish because if you take of course uh here then you lose the queen so so far uh you cannot uh, you have to escape with the queen we have queen to f2 and now again a brilliant move rook takes h3 uh here by stockfish now queen takes uh queen takes g4 you see uh, stockfish is getting really really brutal attack here we have knight to uh, e3 rook takes e3 queen to e3 but now knight to e6 and although uh here this uh, this engine uh this uh, siak engine has uh two rooks for uh, for two minor pieces but the activity of this rook is not good of course here stockfish has a comfortable game here after move knight to f4 uh, the bishop is saying we have queen to uh, g5 rook to b4 but now bishop to e4 really brilliant attack here by the stockfish the queen has to uh, be sacrificed now after uh, d takes e4 we have rook to c2 queen to g4 now check uh, king to b8 king to h7 here uh, rook to b1 and now e3 after rook to e1 in this position this other engine siak resigned because e2 uh is now the severe threat and the bishop is simply uh, not covered anymore you have to give up more material it's simply game over so okay that was i think so far a great game uh as a warm-up uh, as we have said let's go back to this most important strategical ideas uh, this is now our cornerstone position this is now the so-called prague variation of the taraj defense as we said the things that that can happen here are strategies of isolated pawns and strategies of pawn majority attacks so many times you will see this normal idea like in this game to play c4 to get this attack this three versus two situation on the queen side but again there are also different opportunities for white for black uh, these types of structures so of course we analyze them as as a warm-up as i said i think this was a decent game by stockfish although its opponent wasn't maybe the top engine uh, like we have seen recently like uh, lila c0 or some other engines but uh in order to maybe understand what's going on this board i think it was a cool cool game here by the fish so okay i hope that you enjoyed uh, this game i really enjoyed it a lot if you want to study the taraj defense more please check out also some other opportunities in the continuation we're covering also some great games by gary kasparov who was of course one of the most dynamic players of all times be prepared we'll have really brilliant brilliant games in this in this series so okay uh, meanwhile you can watch my queen's game decline series so far we have covered Covered, as i said some other opportunities we have covered the harvard's attack chigor in defense semi tarash and many many more in the if you have trouble maybe to play as black check out my nimzo indian and my hyper accelerated ranks in the defense series as good responses to d4 and e4 and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course